Hey everybody, and welcome to part two of Sequential Games with Private Information. Uh, here's what we're going to do in this game. We've got our sequential game here. Nature's got a 25% chance of going X and a 75% chance of going Y. We're going to assume in this game that player one knows what side of the tree they're on, but player two doesn't. Now how do I show that on the graph? I do it with these. That one says that player two knows that player one went left. They played A, but we're not sure if we're at an XA or a YA. And this thing does the same thing, saying I've kn I know that player one chose B, but I'm not sure if we're on the X side of the tree or the right side of the tree. All I know is the probabilities of each event happening. So when player one didn't know what was going on, but player two did, starting with backwards induction was easy because we player two knew exactly what they were doing. Now player two is confused. And so we're gonna to have to deal with our expectations operator again. So let me do some notation. E sub two is my expectation for player two. This is the expectation of choosing L. Given A is how I read that. Expectation for player two of L given A. Means I know that player two chose A. And so what is my expected value of that? I've got a 25% chance that I'm on the X side. And if I choose L after they choose A, I only get a payoff of one. There's a 75% chance I'm on the right side. If they choose A and I choose L, I'll get six. That gives me an expected payoff for choosing L given an A of 4.75. Expectation for player two of, choose, of R given A, there's a 25% chance of getting a payoff of two. There's a 75% chance payoff, 75% chance of getting a payoff of zero, which means my expected payoff is 0.5. Now I go a little slower through my expectations in the part one video. There's actually a whole different video where I explain where the expectations come from. So if I'm going a little fast, you can either pause or you watch those videos. It's up to you. So what I get from this is that for player two, if they see player one choosing A, moving left has a higher average payoff than moving right. And so player two will respond to an A with an L, which means we know their strategies if player one chooses A. Coming out of that information set, moving left is better than moving right, on average. We can do the same kind of idea for if player one plays B. We can fill out our expectations. And we get all this stuff. And we see that player two is better off if player one chooses B. Player two is better off choosing R. The expectation of L given B is less than the expectation of R given B. So choose R, it's better. It looks like this on the tree. And now we've got an idea of what player two is going to do. Player two, if they observe a B, will play R. And if they observe an A, will play an L. So we know that this is happening. What does player one want to do? Now, these little information sets problems are still there. Uh, so I'm erasing them for visual convenience. Know that they are still a part of the game, okay? Uh, well, let's get rid of them for a second because now we need to remember that player one knows exactly where we are. And player one sees these strategies and will choose accordingly. If nature plays X, player one is better off playing A than B because A leads them here, whereas B leads them there. So if nature plays X, player one plays A. If nature plays Y, player one chooses B because four is greater than zero. No expectations because player one knows exactly what's happening. All right, now let me put these things back in here just so that we can see the game the way it's supposed to look. Uh, and so what is our Bayesian Nash equilibrium? 
Or Bayesian Nash equilibrium is player one plays A if X and plays B if Y. And player two responds by playing L if they observe an A and by playing R if they observe a B. We got that by doing all of our expectation stuff. Now, I'm not going to make any more videos on this topic, I don't think. But I do want to introduce you to a couple of more ways we could mess up the information. We could say, uh, you know, we could say that they don't have the information and they don't have the information. In which case it would sort of be like randomizing between two sequential, two simultaneous games. We could mess with it in a different way. We could say that if nature goes Y, player two doesn't know what's going on. Player one never knows what's going on. But if nature goes X, player two does know what's going on. Like we can structure these things however we want to. It's a very flexible framework that is useful to you in your game theory, but more importantly in actual applications like an industrial organization. So I don't know, do what you gotta do. I hope this video was helpful to you. If not, you know, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy econing.